Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Afternoon, folks. We're going to dive into ASME Section 8 Division 1, and I'm referring to the 2021 edition. And this is rec uh, with regards to the minimum design metal temperatures, and, and this will be part one of and or otherwise episode three. In this section, we're going to talk about the specific nameplate requirements. We're going to talk about design temperature exemptions. And then we're going to talk about exemption curves and wrapping this up with governing thicknesses. And then we'll go on to part two. So let's talk about ASME uh, pressure vessel code uh, nameplate requirements. Section 8, Division 1. There's, there's sections UG21 and UG116 where there's specific requirements. So MDMT uh, is required at the coincident pressure equal to the MAWP. So that's the requirement. You can also look at another section called Section 8 Division 1 UCSA3 uh, where it talks about operating below the nameplate um, values and the procedures for that. These are the two types of, of stamps that you would see on a nameplate, and it's a, a requirement to have the MDMT on, on nameplates as of 1987. As per procedure, the first thing that ASME does is it looks at, goes to UG20 as part F for exemptions. And um, they're, they're in, within UCS 66, there's a, uh, a chart, a table, a figure, and um, it'll, it allows, it provides um, sort of a procedure for how to step through all this. So basically, uh, impact testing is, is per UG84, which is the impact testing procedure, is not mandatory for pressure vessel material for the following conditions. And this is the thickness requirements for P1 and uh, P or P1 or P2, and thickness does not exceed the following. So P1 and P2 are, are, are carbon steel low alloy materials. And so if you have a curve A material per UCS 66 uh, and, you're, and you're less than equal to or less than half an inch, you don't need to uh, do any testing. And if you are less than or equal to one inch for curves B, C, and D per UCS uh, 66, you um, are exempt. So let's continue. The second condition that of all of the conditions that must be met is it has to be hydrostatically or pneumatically pressure tested per UG99 or 27.4 and 35.6. 27, 4, and 35, 6 are the mandatory or slash non-mandatory sections found at the back of the code. Uh, we also have design temperature must be between minus 29 and 345 centigrade. Number four, the thermal or mechanical shock loadings are not a controlling design requirement. Refer to G, UG22. And the fifth criterion is cyclic loading is not a controlling design requirement per UG22. So if you meet all five of these criteria, then 
then uh, the design qualifies for an exemption. We, we uh, alluded to earlier these curves, A, B, C, D, and D, and uh, they refer to the material, the types of classes of materials. And these ex impact exemption curves can be found with API tanks. It can be found uh, with piping system, ASME piping systems as well. So this is sort of very similar, but each one is different and customized to the different design. So this is the what you'll find in Section 8, Division 1. They have curves, uh, basically A, B, and C, and D along, along the edges. And if we continue here, um, so this is found in UCS 66. If you follow general notes D, E, and F, and notes one to four, notes one to four are very specific materials. So uh, if you go to note one for, for curve A, it, get, it spells out the, the materials of construction and so on to D. So uh, looking at the curve itself, you can see that um, basically the A curve at the top is got the lowest um, impact properties, okay? And then if you go down to, to D, this is, you know, tough materials with made to fine grain practices. So this curves only apply to carbon and low alloy steel, which exhibit, um, you know, a transition temperature. High alloy steels exhibit transition temperatures, but at, at cryogenic levels, and and those are very specialized cases. And and there is uh, special rules in in ASME for those requirements. So Group A are is basically the catch-all group that you know if if they don't fall under A or or sorry B or C or D then you drop it into A, but you can see that you're basically sitting at, you know, you're starting at about, you know, minus 10 degrees, and then and so it's like centigrade. So it doesn't really give you a lot if you're if you're there, um, but it is the lowest cost. Now B, um, this is where we, we there's a whole bunch of materials. Most of the materials follow under. Uh, commercial materials fall under group B. Uh, a classic example would be 516 grade 70, the non-normalized material. And um, there's, there's several materials in this group. In group C are called the low strength materials. And they give you a bit more. And then there's finally Group D, which which are called the tough fine grain materials, and the classic one is uh, SA516 grade 70 N, which is very very common, uh, especially in Alberta oil industry. Um, normal seven grade 70 normalized plate is is sort of a, a, a an industry standard. Now, if you if you do not care to, to interpolate manually from curves. ASME provides a, um, a tab tabular form of everything. And, and I, I like the tabular form because I can put that into a spreadsheet, which, which, which we have, and then we can calculate uh, what we need. So for example, we have a thickness of, you know, a, 11.1 millimeters. Uh, a lot of this is a conversion I found over the years is that the SI units is, is kind of the conversion of the imperial units. So, you know, like 6.4 really is, is, is a half an inch. So if you're looking for a more accurate, then I would build the spreadsheet based on the uh, imperial and then convert over. So, so for example, I, I've outlined uh, one example here. This is you know, 11.1 uh, millimeters. If you're in curve A, then you would use um, basically uh, minus four and your curve 
B is minus 29 and so on. So, so curve D can give you to minus 48 degrees. Now the final set we're gonna go through is all of the, the rules within the UCS 66A, one and two, and it's called governing thicknesses. And uh, I, when I first started working with it, I had a little few bit of problems with this, learning this, and uh, I thought we'd spend a, a, a good part of this presentation really talking about this. So basically when we, we, if you saw the earlier videos, we have to, when we look at a pressure vessel consists of, you know, several nozzles and, and different com pressure components, okay, that like the heads, then each of them must be looked separately and put together like with a spreadsheet. And um, Moss has a great, you know, a procedure for, for estimating each of the components using the, the, the uh, MATs for each of the components and then figuring out the, the, the overall um, M, the minimum design metal temperature. So each component is evaluated separately, like we said. And so we, we can look at a, a component here, which is a butt welded component on a head. And this is an example found like a, there's a lot of uh, very procedural images found. So the governing thickness is, is the, is the welded assembly. So, uh, so rule number one is butt welds, except those in flat heads and tube sheets, the nominal thickness will be the thickness of the weld joint. So that'll be number, number one, as we see here. And uh, that'll be the governing thickness. So, so that, you know, this is a very common one that, you, that you, uh, you'll see as a transition in which to use. And so that's, that's how the rules work with this. Look at these configurations here. So we have two corner fillets and, you know, corners, fillets, lap joints, and including attachments, you choose the thinner of the two parts for flat heads and tube sheets, the larger of, of two above or the flat component thickness divided by four. Uh, most of the time, I see us to, taking the the flathead component and dividing it by four. For you know, and this is an example of you know heat exchanger uh, tube sheet that we've worked on over the years, and so that's how I've seen most most guys do that. Part four has to do with um, basically nozzles okay so two welded components you can have you know one with you can have a set in design uh, you can have one with a pad and different variations of those okay and they have very specific rules you can see it's the so ug1 is g means governing right the, of the thinner so you take a or or c so the rules are very you can uh, pretty much find all the rules and uh, that I, I've seen uh, found in these sketches. And this is, I'm referencing sketch um, B, and there's a, a, quite a few sketches in UCS 66.3. And this is part of your individual component evaluation. We're gonna go on to a few more rules about welded assemblies. Number five says, if the governing thickness of any welded joint is greater than four inches, and again, the American system, they tend to use, um, you know, based on inches, uh, and, you know, less than 120 Fahrenheit, then impact testing is required for, for you know, really thick type joints. And that has to do with the triaxial stresses that are found in, in, in very thick parts. And uh, the, we, our earlier video, we sort of, sort of touched on that. So we'd have a sort of an understanding of, you know, why, why are we, is, you know, there's more restrictions uh, for thicker parts. Now, 
what you'll find in UCS 66A 1 and 2 is there they make a difference between welded and non-welded assemblies. There's the rules are different. So you, you know this could be for a casting or forging or is machined from a single part or some of the new new methods where re, where parts are reduced. Um, you know some of the, the modern uh, manufacturing methods. So you can take advantage of these rules. So uh, basically you take the largest nominal thickness of the casting, okay? A non flat non-welded part components thicknesses, you take that and you divide by four. So it's very similar to the, the older rules. The next part has to do with, in there is another image, it's, it's number C and it has to do with a non-welded uh, dished head and the rules are um, the maximum flat thickness divided by four of like it's the maximum of these two the flat flange thickness divided by four or the minimum thickness of the dist portion of the head so that would be the minimum thickness of the dish portion of the head or or uh, T star divided by four, whichever whichever uh, the, the works. Part E has to do with um, non-welded assemblies again, and it's it's very simple. The rules are pretty much the same. Uh, it's but it's for greater than six inches thickness and uh, for, for like castings and forgings and an MDMT must be less than 50 de degrees centigrade. And then um, otherwise uh, impact testing is required. For bolting, for example, they just have a straight table for the different you know, material specs. For example, you know, very common is SA93B7 up to a certain uh, you know diameter of bolt nominal diameter uh, you're you're good to those those temperatures and uh, and so on and if you're over than that then you get a reduction and again you notice that the thicker the material the less um, your MDMT becomes okay. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.